M zero FXB Digital Ham Radio Diary. Welcome. M zero FXB. So I've got my MMDVM board here or Pi Hat. Uh, so got myself a OLED screen because normally it's just like that. So the OLED screen goes, see over here, you can see where it says 3.3 volts ground SCL and S, is that SDA? You can see that. So it goes over these four holes here. Um, as you can see, a corresponding. So they go over the top four, okay? Like so. And then we'll, I'll show you how to set it up in pi star so to get it working so what we're going to do we're going to solder this which comes with the pi with the oled screen the oled screen was only like three pound i actually need two i thought i'd get one and see if it looked all right so that's got to go in there I might need shaving off the side a bit let's turn it round, just a little bit just to, so it um pushes in nice and flat. Anyway, when it does, in the top holes, the top holes, yeah, like so. See that, hopefully. Get some light on it. I think you can see it anyway. So look, you can see them poking through. So then, so I'll tin, I'll tin them. Then I'll, so I'll poke them through and then I'll Solder them in there, and then this, these, I will make sure they reach because if I have to, I'll put them around the other way around. If it works better, it doesn't really make any difference regarding whether it's going to work or not. You get the idea. It's going to join up there. I'm making it fiddly. Anyway, you get the idea, and then we'll uh, solder that in place, and then we'll get it working on PyStar. Right, we've got the flux here. This is the flux we use. Always works well. Some high flux soldering iron. <coughs> Solder, should I say. And then we, there's our solder station. And then we always have a wet sponge for cleaning the, the iron. So, yeah, we'll give it a clean, like so, and then we'll tin it. I'm not sh uh, we've got the flux ready, we'll put a bit on there. I think once we've got one on, I want to get the first one straight. So good luck. I'm not actually very good at soldering. To get the first one on, um, let's see if we can get it to tin a mm, little bit, a little bit. So. Apparently, the best trick of soldering is to get it to get a little bubble in between. It's like a bridge. Um, but anyway, so let's get a bit on there. You could put flux on there, honestly. So, as you can see, I am learning. No, that's not going to work. Let's just pause. See if I can get the first one on there. Right, try again. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a cough. Okay. That one did go on. Did anyone see it though? It honestly did go on, so let's try again. Get some flux. I 
can hear all you solderers, all you good solderers, saying, don't do this, don't do that. I know. So, let's get this one on camera. Let's get a bit more solder on there. Well, it's, uh, I, although I've cleaned the soldering iron and I've used flux, it's just not going on very good. See, it's on there. I just want a little bubble on there. Okay. A little bubble just to hang on to the soldering iron. And then I'll just hold it against the hole and sort of let it fall in. There you go. That one worked. <clears throat> I could uh, snip the pins shorter, couldn't I? I know we've gone crazy overboard on the flux, but next one. And we've got a little bubble there, look. I'm gonna hold it like so and we're gonna drop it in, hold it there. So it just sort of drops in. Now really, you don't want it that sort of dull colour, really. You want it to be a bit shiny. Right, last one. We've got a little bubble there. Right. I know I'm a bad soldier, but that did work. So, next thing is to get the screen on there without, um, so I would tin it, but I'm worried that if I tin it, I won't get it on, it won't slide over. Let's take the antenna off, although I did give a second to, to, to grip on. Right, so slide that over, I know one pin was a bit bent, but... My thumb's in the way. Right, that went on. Okay, so let's see if we can get a bit of solder in there without completely ruining the screen. Get my soldering iron. And then let's get some flux on there. Oh, <laughs> well the screen has got a, a cover to protect it, honest. The flux is gonna make all the solder go on the screen, lol. Right, so here goes, drop it in each hole. Not brilliant, but I think it is going in there. Needs a bit more, I think. The other problem I've got is my eyesight is just rubbish close up. Right, well that seems to work. It's not tidy, but it's worked. So let's get... <clears throat> Next one. Not too bad. And again. OK. 
Okay, a little bit close to the screen. I'm worried about damaging the screen. Okay, that went in. Last one. I mean, it's only two pound the screen, so if it's damaged, I'm not that worried. Right, that's that's on there. We're gonna uh, turn off the uh, solder unit. That's my little sponge I have, and that's my thing. I put it in a jar because it, when it falls over, it empties the whole lot, and it's a waste. So there are about five or a bottle of these. So, in the next part of the video, let's just peel off this thing here and see if I've caused any damage to the actual screen. Seems okay. So, I know it's, I just noticed it is touching in this gap here. I'm just hoping that no live is touching any earth, which could be in that hole. It seems all right, but we'll know because it'll come up with error. So this is it. You can buy these actually with the screen on for about 25 quid, but for about 15 without. And, uh, they work brilliant without them, to be honest. So the next thing, let's see if it actually boots up. Right, so we've plugged it in. It's all booted up, and now we're going to go into Pistar and tell it to use the OLED screen. But uh, so far, all looks fine. So here's Pistar, we're gonna go into configuration. You need to make sure this is the uh, hat that's selected here. Obviously get your call sign in and things like that. And then up here, see the screen section? Select, where it says none, Select OLED. I'll go for type 3, I'm not actually sure. And this is what the other ones say. And then click Apply. And then what we'll do, we're going to go over to the screen. And if, if we've done it right, it'll just, um, the screen will just start displaying all the information. It takes, you know, Pi Star on a Pi Zero is a bit slow. If you haven't already got one of these um, MMDVM Pi Star hotspots, they are. Um, they're very inexpensive and they do C4FM, DMR um, and D-Star and they just work brilliant and they've got quite a good range on them. And there's loads for sale on eBay. I'll show you now what the sort of price they sell for. Let's just let this thing boot first. <clears throat> right, you've seen a little flash there. Wasn't much of a flash though, was it? Maybe there is a short. It did flash. Ah, there you go. Okay. So look, it's actually working. Let me just get get the radio next to it. Fairly warm, and there you go. There you go. Again. We had a uh, last night. Went to about 55, 60 miles. 60 mile an hour, but uh, they've died down now, uh, probably down to about, uh, maybe down 25, 50 mile an hour, which isn't too bad to start from. KC3, T-Y-Y-T-0-C-A-S. So I'm very pleased with that, and as you could see, it even showed the IP address. You know, it will show the IP address, I think it will show the call sign. The reflector you're on and all that for about I think it was two pound eighty. Now I'll just quickly show you on my computer. I know I'm not showing the actual computer, but look, you know, you can buy these for here's one here for seventeen pound. And the, the OLED screen when I bought it was like three pound from China. Um so you can buy them with the OLED screen connected, you know, but they cost